Hello and welcome back to How to Build a Nixie Clock for Absolute Beginners. Uh, this is the next video installment. It has been about two and a half years and I apologize for that. Uh, I had to move twice and change jobs twice, so real life kind of got in the way of making these videos, but I'm back at it. I'm going to try and finish the series out for y'all. I have been building some clocks as gifts and things of that nature, so I wanted to finish the video out. Uh, if you do not know what this is, it is a video series based on an Instructables blog that I wrote. I will link the Instructables blog to this description of this video or you can go back to video one and take a look at the introduction video which will give you a short synopsis on everything that's going on. But I want to try and keep the video as short as possible so I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, last time we looked at how to use the 74141 chips. These two guys right here, those are your Nixie tube drivers. and we before that looked at how to use this 74HC595. This is a shift register. All three are 16 pin IC chips. Before we continue, I also want to cover exactly what's going on up here with the LEDs. So they don't have an actual Nixie tube for this software, or I couldn't find one anyways. So I'm using LEDs to signify each of the digits or legs on the Nixie tube. And so we'll make a quick comparison here. So the way you want to think about this is each of these digits on the Nixie tube portion of the schematic, which this is Nixie tube one and this is Nixie tube two, rep is represented by a single LED in this point. And then you have your, or in this, pr uh, the fritzing program. And in the back, you have your anode, which runs into this 50K resistor, which runs into your step-up chip we discussed on how to set up earlier in the video series. So the reason this works so well is, as you can see, you have eight outputs on this shift register, four inputs on the uh, the Nixie driver, and so, you know, four on each is equals eight, and you have, happen to have eight outputs on this shift register. Uh, going back to the LEDs real quick, so you can see here, I'm adding a positive five volt power supply to each of these LEDs, which would reference to the tubes in the schematic as the step up voltage, and then the grounds of the LED run into the Nixie tube drivers, which is exactly how you would set that up if this was an actual Nixie tube. A quick synopsis of how we're going to do this. You can see we're going to have, coming out of the board, we have a pink, brown, and scion wire. Those are connected to digital pins 2, 3, and 4. All 2, 3, and 4 pins run here into the shift register. This scion wire here, this pink wire here, and this brown wire here. And so those are your clock and all your gate pins and everything, and that's what you use to control the shift register. So by, you know, and review the shift register video if you need to, but by alternating the wires or the outputs of the shift register to high and low, we are going to set the Nixie driving IC chips to high or low. So just a quick refresher, here's your A output on the shift register, here's your B output, C output, D, E, F, G, and H. Uh, then you have, you know, of course, ground. I've got this pin pulled high and then the VCC for this chip as well. So looking over here at your Nixie driving IC chip, you have A, B, VCC, or your 5 volts in. I'm sorry, this is not B, it's D, and I believe this is B and C. But anyways, you have these four inputs, and those are all connected to here, 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 and here. So to four outputs of the shift register. So let's say that you wrote code to this shift register and you set outputs A, B, C, and D all to one. So then you're going to get all outputs one on the 74141. And so considering this is a two tube circuit, let's just say this is ours. If you needed to you know, make zero three your, your output, you're going to write some if statements in your Adreno code or just use mine. And, you know, you're going to set these first four wires to whatever the combination is on the actual Nixie tube driver to say zero and three for the other one. So, of course, you have your outputs coming out of your shift register into the inputs of the driver here. As you can see, here's the green wire coming in and the orange wire coming in. And on the other side, you have the same four things. You have this blue wire going to A, this yellow wire going to B, this orange wire going to C, and this green wire going to D. So by toggling what you're going to do with this guy here, um, you know, you'll make these to uh, actuate or display the appropriate data. Now for the Nixie tube drivers, uh, if you recall from the last video, 
certain pins turn on certain numbers. So here, for example, this is I just happen to know this is zero. Uh, so if you turn on this guy right here, and I believe that's if you turn on all four of these low. So essentially, if you push zero, 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 or low, 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 low out of your shift register, all these pins would set to zero, and it would ground this wire and display the number zero on your Nixie tube. Uh, essentially, that's the basics of it. It's uh, pretty straightforward. If you need any help with the wiring, you can always take a picture of this, reference the instructable. Uh, just keep in mind that this is the sort of the heart of each board and you're going to have depending on how what you have for the for your actual clock you're going to have two or three of these full blown s systems if you have hours and minutes you just need two because you have a left and a right tube for each and if you have hour minute seconds you're going to have three obviously two tubes for each the hour the minute and the seconds so when you get into the code what's going to happen is is you're going to read the DS1307 clock, you're going to parse out the hours, minutes, and seconds as numbers, and then uh, with a long line of if statements, your, or subclauses, or however you want to make the code, or if reference mine, you're going to light up the corresponding uh, tubes to the correct number. And that's all I've got for this episode. Um, hope to see you in the next one.